Hello, everyone. I'm Ralph John Fritz. Join us now for what is probably the final tennis match between Jimmy Connors and Bjorn Borg on Sports America. <laughs> See this little half drop volley there, and Connors tried to do the same thing, just flick the ball back cross court. He just didn't have enough mustard on the ball. And the first drop shot attempt by Bjorn Borg is a winner. Hello again, everyone. I'm Ralph John Fritz, your host for Sports America. You know, there are few legends in sport. Achieving that status requires consistently winning major championships and developing a special relationship with the fans. Well, Bjorn Borg, five-time Wimbledon champion, whose impeccable, almost icy on-court demeanor captured our imagination. He's one of the true legends of tennis. Bjorn Borg, however, is retiring from the game that brought him greatness. Jimmy Connors still on top after his spectacular 1982 victories at Wimbledon and the U.S. Open is also in the Pantheon. This exhibition match, which brings Borg and Connors together for their final head-to-head -head match, will be full of emotion as well as great tennis. Now to the Centroplex in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, Bob Goldshaw and Steve Carter provide the play-by-play. -play. This is Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and that's the state capital built in the early 1930s by the Huey Long administration. It is the tallest capital in the United States. And also along the banks of the Mississippi we'll look with the Capitol is the Centroplex, a municipally owned auditorium that is just four years old. Bob Goldshaw and Steve I'm Carter and Steve, as they're about to begin, this may please. well be the last time these two will meet. There's Bjorn Bork. Bob, you're so right. I visited with Jimmy early today, and he seemed excited about the opportunity. Bjorn had, has already played two exhibitions and seemed a little tired, but uh, he left us clinic early this afternoon and went back and went to bed as we wait for the spectators to sit down and he looks rested and ready to go okay Borg won the toss elected to receive <laughs> 15 love 15 love an awful lot 15 all you see here Borg is trying to work Jimmy around a little bit and, and Jimmy is going to attack here Are you be like this all night? the ball bottom of the net again I'm not sure if either one of them are tight Jimmy's talking to the crowd <laughs> it's an exhibition but there is, we understand, $120,000 in prize money. We are not quite sure how it is going to be divided. There is a little bit of mystery as far as percentage for winner and loser. So we'll just leave it at uh, a purse of $120,000. And 3015. I know this afternoon when they were asking Jimmy some questions, they asked, who is your favorite pay person to play? And it was beyond board. <laughs> Well, they have had some memorable tennis matches over the years, which will develop as this match wears on. Great, great matches. And in the head-to-head, -head, Borg leads 14 to 8. Ten of those 14 coming in succession, the last 10 in a row. Donnie Rohn, president 15. of the Louisiana Tennis Association, is our baseline judge. 40-15, first game of the first set. It is the best of three with the tiebreaker at six all, should they go to six all. Hmm. Jimmy is now knocked over the receiver. 
training wall. We have to do some mending over on the sideline. Great shot, though, Bjorn. 40, 30. I doubt we'll see them at the net very often. This is what it'll be. As we see here, Jimmy, and Bjorn hits a cross-court winner. Jimmy couldn't even reach it and moved over and knocked the restraining wall down. Oh. A great get by Bjorn. He did not have an opportunity to, to practice on the court this afternoon. Deuce. They go to Deuce in the first game in the first set. Bjorn Borg looking as, I won't say as fit, Steve, because it's unfair in the first game of the first set, but looking as trim as ever. And advantage Bjorg. So, Borg with a game point. And the familiar waddle from side to side that we have seen over the years. point as we see it again that uh, Bjorn had his chance but both of them are playing the entire court and Jimmy just tacks very hard down the line and Bjorn trying to pass and nets the ball. Back to Deuce. And advantage Connors. Jimmy's struggling a little bit here in this first game. Advantage Connors. hangs in and wins the first game of the first set. And what a great sequence and series it's been. Wimbledon champs, 76 through 80. Good. And Bob, that's Jimmy's strength, as we know. He takes the ball on the rise so well. His back-end returner serve, as we oh, see it here, 50. is just incredible. Watch him as he steps into the ball with a short back swing and nails the winner down the line. The thing about Jimmy Connors, there's so many positive things. We'll get to it. Connor's ball was out. Playing board may have uh, the string as he goes over here to change rackets. And it's a, it's astounding what he's, the tension that he uses on these rackets, Bob. Up in the 80s, isn't he? It, it, is, it is. And you can just hear, as I said before, the sound of the ball as it comes off the, the racket sounds so heavy. It's incredible. But he, he strings his rackets tighter than any other professional in the world. And he has to have them to precision. And tennis players have their favorite stringers throughout the world. They get a little book. Connors to the center line. Judge helping him out. Well, they're going to have fun here yep. tonight, Bob, and so are we. It's going to be a great match. These players attribute their recent success to an improved serve, Jimmy in particular this year. And the trademark you mentioned a moment ago of Connors was the return of serve. With Borg, it's the passing 30 shot. All. 30 all. Second game of the first set. Connors held service in the first game and leads 1-0. backswing and tremendous top spin on the ball and ever with the two-handed backhand they have really changed the game there it's unorthodox now strokes there's nothing orthodox at all back when labor and rosewall and yep. those people were playing oh. 
Well, I was about to say that a player like Borg, who uses excessive topspin, can miss hit a lot of balls, Steve, and still get it in, which he will do uh, in the course of the match. One of the advantages of topspin. That time he did not gain, and a great, great return by Connor. Sure was. He loves it, he thrives on it, and he puts pressure on the serve, but they have to make a better serve. Here we have a break point for Connors. So Jimmy Connors with an advantage in the second game. Just missed out. Incidentally, if we haven't told you, this surface is Supreme Court, a very common indoor rubberized surface that can play differently, of course, from one Supreme Court to the other. This seems to be a little harder than some we've seen. comes in with a cross court that's short and the anticipated cross court Connors nailed it down the line for the winner Ed Connors at this level when you hit short you can start walking to the other court to receive serve Bork has really improved his serve for those in our viewing audience who have not seen Bork play personally uh, it's astounding how hard he gets that serve So back to Deuce in game two. And Connors was not able to handle that one as he gets pulled wide to the backhand. Advantage Borg. Bjorn Borg, who said this past November that tennis is just no longer fun, and I think he means the grind of full-time tournament play. So Bjorn holds on and wins his first service game, and we are at 1-1 in the first set. A little wide. Connors especially, Steve, uh, I think exemplifies that bouncing between hits better than most, which uh, we're going to try and show you during the match, the footwork of Jimmy Connors, which you don't always see because we all tend to follow the ball sometimes. Love 15. Love 15. chances we're going to see here that he, he put the overhead away but he gave him a chance to put the ball in play and jimmy just pushed it deep the crowd was on its feet in anticipation of the ball dropping in love love 30. we're back live we are at one all in the first set the best of three and jimmy connors makes it 15 30. Bob, if we get a shot of that, we'll see him take the ball on the right. And that's where he's at his best. He loves to attack, and he loves to take the ball early. He hits the ball flat in contrast to Borg's top. Fault, second serve. Try to get a 
shot here of, of the movement of Jimmy Connors and his footwork and his preparation. 1540. It's 1540. As each player has had break point in the first two games against. Now Borg with double break point. And it's called wide, very close. Tough to tell from our location, but it's second serve. Great approach, set it up. You saw Borg 30, back on his heels. See here, it's right there. Again, takes up that short ball, as you mentioned, on the rise. He puts the overhead away. 30-40. First set, 1-1 one, one in games. Service line judge is Steve Christensen from Alexandria, Louisiana. He's well known around these parts, so he's an excellent umpire. Connors hitting a tough volley that time, but with great depth. Deuce. And he goes right back to Deuce. The man in the chair, if we didn't mention it, is Mr. Charles Turner. We'll show you him during the course of the match, and his wife is the net judge. One one in games, deuce in this game. And Jimmy Connors, there's Charles Turner. Friend of yours, Steve, isn't he? Yes, he's from New Orleans. He has a son that plays for LSU. Gary Turner. So Connors fights back from 1540 to take advantage here. Add point. looks at him starts talking with him well, I heard her say you're gonna retire I didn't hear the rest of it what was it Steve? I believe he said something you're gonna retire with a shot like that that's it the crowd loves it Quiet, please. just when the crowd had gotten quiet Charles Turner in the chair said quiet please and Connors <laughs> enjoyed that as much as the crowd did. Not sure Charles Turner enjoyed that <laughs> so much. Good, sir. You know something, Steve? You know? We talk about Borg hitting with excessive topspin and Connors hitting flat. I'm telling you, there's not that much difference in the actual rotation of the ball over the net between those two, as you might think. His ball is not flat. It's no ball can be, but it's close. And Borg doesn't hit with excessive topspin, as well, we often thought. It seems like that tonight he isn't. I've seen him in the past, though, Bob. As you've noted, Borg's hitting an awful lot of short balls tonight. That time Connors is wide. Trouble there. He had to win that 30, point. He's facing break point. 
We see it again. He again attacks a short ball, and Borg tries to throw up a topspin lob that he, he hits short, and Jimmy has an easy put away. So we're at 30 all. 5 3 in games. Connors. Called wide, second serve. Ball is definitely wide. I thought so too. Mm. You notice that time Borg ran around that second serve and nailed the forehand that put pressure on Jimmy. Right at the start of his, we see it again. He had run around. You see where he was on the court there, Bob. Yep. And he comes in and hits a cross-court winner. Again, that open forehand where he hits the ball off the right foot. It's, it's disguised. You don't know whether he's going down the line or that angle cross-court. And it also helps, Steve, when you hit the baseline with it as he did that time. <laughs> Connors is now facing a break point. It Borg back in this first set. Just to remind you, should... It go to six all. We'll have the 12 point tiebreaker. And there it is. And Jimmy's not laughing right now. This time he is chastising that baseline judge for what he thought was a bad call, but. Nevertheless, Bjorn Borg gets his first break, and we get back on service. So, the score, Connors 5, Borg 4, Bjorn Borg, and Jimmy Connors. Career highlights, and you really have to be selective just to, to fill the screen correctly. Wimbledon champion, four years, runner-up 81, French Open champion, six years, Masters. Only thing he's never won is the U.S. Open, four times a bridesmaid but never a bride. Good. No. Nope. No. Nope. Call it back. Just back. Sorry. 15 love. 15 love. Just a bit long with that lob. Jimmy's again talking with Donnie Roan. Baseline umpire. Looks like Bud Collins a little bit, doesn't he? I don't know whether they'd appreciate that or not. <laughs> <laughs> Connors is wide, so it's 40 love. Bjorn Borg a point away from behind the match. Might want to comment a little bit later on in this match about the differences between how Borg has a tough time with McEnroe and McEnroe a tough time with Lindell and Connors a tough time with Lindell or Lindell a tough time with Connors rather and we want to talk a little bit about styles of play. All right. Jimmy playing a very loose game that time. The first one. A couple of unforced errors. Game ball. And Borg, just like that, oh, comes yeah. back and ties the match. Jimmy just looks very lackadaisical at playing this point as you mentioned. Just puts the ball out. I mean, wasn't even close. No. Bjorn Borg getting set to serve at 5-6 in the first set. Steve and I were talking earlier about the retirement, the announced retirement of Borg, the fact that he's played 10 years of tournament tennis. He's very wealthy and doesn't need that grind again. But, Steve, you had an additional thought on the uh, reason for his retirement. Well, you know, Bob, that Jimmy Connors, when he plays, he plays with an awful lot of emotion. He releases a lot of the tension through either his grunts or his... Uh, court antics or whatever it might be you just had a shot at Bjorn Borg he always has the same facial expression you he's think a that true gentleman, into it, hmm? and it could be that he, he's just tired of the grind mentally and it may be as Dick Vermill a burnout maybe all right good point five six in games Borg trying to send the first set into a tiebreaker Oops. 
and it's deep. 15 love. 15 love. See a replay here in which, again, they're rallying the balls, and Borg hits another short ball. Connors comes in, and he hits the volley in the bottom of the net. Not the bottom, the top of the net, but it's the same thing. He did not make the ball over the net. Did not go over at 30 love. Oh. May have been and a, 40 love. May have been a bit surprised on that volley because the ball was very close to the net. He did not bend his knees and get down on the ball on that volley. Did he get it? If he did. We no, thought he did. I thought he did. I did too. Now a little bit of that top spin. And it's good. That one was good. Jimmy knows it. You see, this is the first game that I can recall Borg hitting with that top spin that we know from see, years ago. See it by. again. There's the depth you were talking about. Pushes Connor deep in the court. He attacks here. It's a very deep ball for a winner. Okay, tiebreaker. 12-point tiebreaker. The first player to win seven points by a margin of two. Wins the first set. And he's halfway home. Well, I shouldn't say that. Could be a third of the way home. The best of three. And a real good Jimmy Connor serve makes it. Love one. Love one. And right back with a big hammer of his own. I mean, interesting to see how they play this tiebreaker. I know that Bjorn would love to win this first set. Super return. Now, as you see it again, a great serve, and there's Bjorn serving and volleying, which is a little bit of a surprise tactic. However, the return was just too good. Angle begets angle. Of course, you got to be able to do it. You see it, 6-6, first set, we're in the tiebreaker. Connors goes for the ace that time. Second serve. really getting into this now, Bob. Mm -hmm. this, see this again here with Connors and, and Borg, that let card, and Connors thought that because the ball was a little low that he was going to go back cross court and Bjorn hit a winner down the line. Two all on the tiebreaker. Good. That's not good. 3-2. I think Borg would rather play two sets than three sets tonight. And it's 4-2. Since, as you mentioned, Steve, he has had that terrible uh, plane trip from Thailand, and he's not yet recovered. Connors just as soon go three sets to right. this. You're right. He looked very fit, and as I mentioned, when Borg was in this afternoon, he looked rather tired, but again, the adrenaline is pumping, I'm sure, because maybe the last time in, in a quite a while he'll have a chance to face Connors, and Connors being number one in the world, he'd like to go out saying, I defeated the number one player in the world, regardless whether it's an exhibition or not. 
Four to two in favor of Borg in the tiebreaker. Just missed. Borg even thought he had he jumped at the end, Bob, trying to wish the ball in the court, but he just missed. Let's watch the, the legs and feet of Jimmy Connors. We talked about the footwork of Connors. Just, just watch the feet in between the hits. Look at that. Bouncing, moving, ready for the next one. There's a Boom, split step. Split right. step. There's a great tennis tip right there. Keep in motion. Got to remind myself to do that. Don't pose. 4-3. <laughs> Make it 3-4 with Connors serving. on that point and he's moving a little quicker than he has he seems to be getting his legs right now three five big point here second serve makes it even bigger opportunity to have set point against him. 5-4. So Borg still has the mini break. Yep. He can win the first set if he holds service on these two uh, ensuing points. You know, they're serving the wrong side. They've forgotten the score. That's right. Correct. That's <laughs> That's funny. Both of them had forgotten. That's right. And then Connors realized that you serve into the ad court after the first serve in the tiebreaker. You start in the ad court. Second serve. Well, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Connor's with it now. 
<laughs> I believe Connors is kidding when he's asking Charles Turner to step down. He is. Since your time is up. You're unnecessary. <laughs> I can't put it any plainer than that. Well, <laughs> was that he knows uh, that the four. man in the chair is allowed to overrule, but he thought it was delayed. That is my thinking. But it is 6-4. Nevertheless, and it is set point for Bjorn Borg. And that should be the set. No, it's not. Tiebreaker, seven points to four. So Bjorn Borg wins the exciting tiebreaker and the first set, seven games to six. In the second set, Jimmy Connors showed his famous determination and won 6-4. So going into the third and deciding set, it is tied at one each. Here again are Bob Goldshaw and Steve Carter in the Centroplex, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. A one-set match. Maybe the last set they'll ever play. Let's see how they play it. Be interesting to see how Borg plays this. Do you uh, care to venture a prediction? Let me wait Think a little while. It. All right. Don't wait too long, though. <laughs> by that much. Above 15. Yes, Jimmy does not like to attack and Bjorn's backhand, but he attacked that ball extremely, but he underspun the ball. He, he hit the ball and the ball stayed low. So it calls Borg to have to hit up on the ball and he missed it. Oh. Once Borg led Connors back into the point, Connors had a lot of room and like we will a killer. Hit it where he ain't. He had an easy overhead, too, Bob. And Connors very wide, middle of the alley. 15-30. 15-30. on a short ball, 40. and Borg hits that passing shot down the line, but Connors with a, a, a very spread volley leans out and hits the ball very crisply for a winner. It's tough to do that. And Borg had to cover that forehand side with all that open court, but Connors just uh, pulled him. That's out. And Jimmy Connors wins the first game of the third and deciding set. They arrived early here in Baton Rouge at the Centroplex tonight for this match. 15, Bob. They had a little contest earlier and pitted Borg against Connors within the kids' clinic. And surprisingly, I would say 75% of the kids were for Borg. Hmm. So they're starting to try to get into it a little bit here to encourage him to Make a comeback here in the third. And it's long. And perhaps, well, I'm going to hold it perhaps, but we talked about that fatigue factor. It'll be interesting to see how Borg handles himself in this third set.
15. He definitely needs to get on the board here in the, the third set. Still, he had a shot at the ball. It just his timing was off a little bit. And it jumped over his head. Hey. Uh, Bjorn guessing that time, and he guessed wrong. I sure like the way Jimmy Connors. If we get a shot of the way he prepares, he's very compact. He takes a straight back backswing but it's very compact, and he just jumps on the ball, Bob. Ace. Ace Second ace of the match for Borg. can pay for it. Back to deuce. That's a timing shot. It's not an easy shot. And again, a short ball. And he tries to top spin the lob, as you said. Very short. Jimmy just closes in and puts the volley away. Jimmy Connors with his back to you. Bjorn Borg serving. A couple of close calls on each side of the net that time. And then to the big serve to get the first point. Very interesting to see how Connors plays this. I think, Steve, if he goes down 30, love, he may just save himself for that next service game. Let's see, though. All right, now it's 30, love. I don't mean jump the point, but he might go for a winner when he normally wouldn't have. What do you think, Coach? I think you're right. I think you're right. Well, let's he, see. He's hitting out on all the balls. He feels very good now. That's a good serve. Second double fault of the night for Bjorn Borg, although this one is not costly. Makes the score 40-15. Bob, he takes the ball on the rise and just hits yep. cross-court winners. 40-30. And a double fall. That is costly. We are at deuce after Borg was leading 40 love. Great serve. It sure was. Came at a, at a very good time, of course. Two points away from facing match point. When we talk about fatigue, it's not it's not the fatigue of being in condition, it's his legs. And there's the game. So 
Bjorn Borg hangs in and wins his service. Let's watch Connors in action. It's leaned that into the ball extremely well. In that particular point, he took a half volley on the rise, kept the ball up above the net, and is that the point where you said he played an out ball? But when you have the adrenaline flowing and you're up 40 love and you're up two breaks, you can afford to play some take loose points shot. and right take yeah. your best shot. And it was a spectacular cross court volley winner. So Jimmy Connors serving for the match and at least sixty thousand dollars. Fair night's work. Mm. his knees. See how they're bent? They're down this time, and he makes the shot. Love 30, and Jimmy Connors trying to nail the coffin. Jimmy, he took his time on this serve. He, he took more time than he normally does. He leans out into it, as you said, right on the tee. On the big points, he has taken his time more. And that's a big critical point for our viewing audience that are players, that on these big points, take your time. Don't rush into it. Trouble is, Steve, in the big cities, you only have the court for an hour sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know what you mean. Second serve. so obviously he must have felt like it was wide also. Advantage board. Yesterday or today? Yesterday. Yesterday, and he's leaving after this match tonight. Yeah. Second serve. Yeah. I'm sorry, that was uh, that was the first serve. Fifteen love. <laughs> uh -huh. And 
suddenly, Steve, things are getting interesting. 30 long. body weight and a good thrust out into the court. And it handcuffs Jimmy as you see. So you're on board. Closes the gap. It'll be Connor serving at five games to four. Actually, he was leading 5-1. Wasn't he in this set, or are my numbers wrong? He was leading... You're correct. It's 5-4. times that we'll see beyond Borg in competition against mm -hmm. Jimmy Connors. Thirty fifteen. Just a picture-perfect serve. Look how far in he was. Well inside the service line, even if he had to hit that first volley. And it's match point Connors. You going to charge? I don't think so. Okay. Oh, he went for it. He went for that ace, though, didn't he? Sure did. Look for that same spot he just hit. Second serve. Jimmy Connors 
in what may be the in final match in, in their outstanding careers. Jimmy Connors the winner by scores of 6-7, 6-4, and 6-4. So Jimmy Connors wins the third set 6-4 and the match from his great rival Bjorn Borg. Now if the Swedish star's retirement is permanent, this will have been their final duel. Sports America is proud to have brought these two champions to our public television audience. Thanks for joining us. I'm Ralph John Fritz. So long, everybody. That's one of the most difficult things in tennis when you're going one way and then you have to react and reverse your field with great athlete that Borg is. You saw what happened. Mm. Oh. And he handles a dipping backhand beautifully that time. Sports America is a production of the Pacific Mountain Network. I'm Tony Brown. You can look forward.